TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. The Waco History Podcast is sponsored by Brotherwell Brewing on Historic Bridge Street in Waco. Welcome to the Waco History Podcast. We're going to air for you over the next few months a a special series of Waco History Living Stories. Uh, These were segments that originally aired on KWBU here in Waco. Uh, They were produced by the Institute for Oral History editor, Michelle Holland, and narrated by two fabulous narrators, uh, Louis Mazze and Kim Patterson. And so these highlight oral histories from the collection of the Institute for Oral History at Baylor University, which I direct, which has been around since 1970 and has over a thousand interviews related to Waco and McLennan County history. And we're happy to highlight those here. This vignette from Living Stories uh, is on the 19th Amendment, uh, which we just celebrated the centennial of just back in 2020. Then the night came alive. This is Living Stories, featuring voices from the collections of the Baylor University Institute for Oral History. I'm Kim Patterson. For more than a century, the majority of American women were denied the right to vote. Scores of determined suffragettes who wanted to reverse this injustice spoke out through publications, lectures, rallies, and appearances before legislators. Finally, these efforts paid off with the ratification in August 1920 of the 19th Amendment, which states, The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Anna Gladys Jenkins Casimer was a student at Baylor in 1920 and recalls events surrounding the ratification. I remember parades they had in Waco and there were a lot of women dressed in white on a float and they were carrying banners or saying, we want the right to vote or something like that. I remember how thrilled my mother was that she got to vote in the 1920 election. She was interested in voting in the gubernatorial election as well as the national election. Mm -hmm. She was thrilled that she could vote. Martha Lena Emmons, also a student at Baylor during the amendment's adoption, describes an editorial cartoon concerning women's suffrage. But I remember one cartoon that I saw one time where there was a lady policeman in Chicago, I believe it was the newspapers had it. And a cartoon came, I showed an old bum with a lady with a policeman's costume on, and she had a hat pin. And she said, now get a move on. And this old bum said, who say that the pin ain't mightier than the sword? And she was riding him along with a hat pin. But, uh, oh, that'd been the latest movement always, you know. Emmons explains her reaction to the new law. I remember very well here in Baylor that Mrs. Russell, who was an aide of Miss Claypool, was lecturing to us one time or talking with a group of us about how to vote and where to vote and the responsibility of voting. And she said, I did not seek it, but it's our responsibility now. And that was sort of, um, oh, it's always been my attitude. I didn't seek it, but we had it, and it's our responsibility. And the tragedy of it has been that a great many have not bothered to exercise this privilege, which they fit, fled, and died to get, and all that sort of thing. But so is true of any of our privileges. Do you recall your first vote? Oh, very well. I don't know how it made it if Paul Davis hadn't shown me what to do. I was teaching in, in uh, Calvert, Texas, and um, we went down to the city hall to vote. And uh, Mr. Davis, whom we call Paul Davis, because we took our meals over there, and there was just such a sweet old couple that uh, looked at us and told us our kids, their kids and all that. And when I saw him over there helping run that thing, oh, I just felt so relieved. And I dashed over and I said, Paul Davis, show me what to do and where to go. And he did, you know. Yes, I remember very well my first vote. Mm -hmm. The court case Lesser versus Garnett 
which reached the Supreme Court in 1922, argued the 19th Amendment was not valid. But in a unanimous decision, the Supreme Court stated the amendment was constitutional on all points brought into question. For more information about this program or the Institute for Oral History, visit us at baylor.edu slash livingstories. Thanks for listening to the Waco History Podcast. Like what you heard? Subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes so we can reach more listeners. You can find show notes and info on every episode at wacohistorypodcast.com and more info on Waco's past at wacohistory.org. Our theme music, used with permission, is Cross the Brazos at Waco, performed by the late Billy Walker. For more info on Billy's music, go to billywalker.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.